So anyway, um, Tennessee, like everybody knows that we're from Tennessee. Yes. Yeah. And we try to cover mostly stuff in Tennessee because, you know, we're familiar with it, but we also have a lot of family there. So it kind of, it, it can be disgusting because we're worried about our family and, you know, things that could happen to them. Yeah, that's true. Right? Very true. And and through all this, we're we're starting really what's going to be our third year soon. Yes. And wow. it's, yeah, gosh, time flies, right? Mm -hmm. But I can't help it. I got to giggle a little bit. Like we're noticing this really dirty trend. Yeah, I don't know if I want to giggle about it, though. But still, you're like, you know, it's it's kind of what we're seeing is it's in your face. And it's almost like nobody wants to do a damn thing or even admit it. That's right. Yeah, it's crazy. So in, in this area, you know, that we're going to be talking about again today um, is the uh, is the 13th Judicial District of Tennessee. Yes, the hills of Hillam, Tennessee and Overton County, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. And a couple other counties are included in that district, too, right? Yes, I believe so. I think Jackson County. Mm -hmm. And then there's one more. Yeah. Yeah, there's one more. Now, I know that, like, where Hillam, Tennessee is, mm -hmm. it's about an hour east, hour and 15 minutes east of Nashville. Mm -hmm. Maybe an hour and 45 minutes. I don't know exactly. Something like that, you know. Yeah. It's not just really long. And then from Cookville, it is about 20 minutes north. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty close to Cookville. Okay. So yeah. we're still in the middle part of Tennessee, right? Close to Kentucky. Yeah, Pretty but close. The central north, more or right. less. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. East of Nashville, west of Knoxville area. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and, you know, you've told me some frightening things about this area that there are multiple cases in this area that just more or less feel like uh, the district attorney there just kicks them out the door. Well, we doesn't covered, do anything. That's right. We covered one um, back when we first started, and that was Lauren A.G., Mm -hmm. You remember that one? Yeah, it's a lake up there. Wake Fest, yeah. And uh, we covered that one. So there's one right there. Mm -hmm. There's another that happened in 2014 that we have not covered, but I think we might go back and cover it. Uh -huh. And that is the uh, case of Courtney Cash, who is Johnny Cash's um, great niece. Okay. So there was a case up there where she was um, she was murdered and put into a box inside of her home. Uh -huh. Her boyfriend and a friend of his were involved, and there was drugs involved. And we'll go into that when we talk about that case. Well, and I'm assuming that's after Johnny and June Carter passed. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, that was 2014 that this happened with Courtney. And then there was a case in 2019 that's going to take us to the exact road mm -hmm. and town of the, of the uh, case we're going to talk about in depth today mm -hmm. and that was turkey town road mm -hmm. in hillam tennessee yeah so it, it again this is a point that we've got to go back and maybe cover some of this other stuff because mm -hmm. it's you know concentric to this area and this particular district attorney that represents that area um and right. we've experienced this before in the kingsport area with a few cases up there too Right, it just seems like every all these women are falling through the cracks. Now, the case that I was referring to on Turkey Town Road, that's not the one we're talking to about today, mm -hmm. was that of um, his name was Aaron Shane Key, mm -hmm. and it uh, that happened in 2019. Okay, so um, all this is there's a lot of information on all these cases I just named off, and um. We'll, we'll go into more of them later on down the road. But today, I want to focus on this particular case out of Hillam, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. So everybody pay close attention here because, again, we're going to be visiting this area quite a bit over the next few episodes. Right, right. But today, we're going to talk about 26-year-old Caitlin Avery Ledbetter. Mm -hmm. And um, on May the 2nd, of 2021, 26-year-old Caitlin jumps out of her father's um, home, out of her bedroom window, mm -hmm. 
and she runs off into the woods Mm -hmm. and she has not been seen since. So I want to go into depth about that. Yeah. So it was early summer. It was May, May the 2nd of 2021. So we're the end of spring. Right. We're looking at COVID time too. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about that too. And maybe that has something to do with what was going on. I don't know. Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot to this, and I really had to dig for this because there's just not a lot of media attention mm-hmm. at all. Um, Caitlin, you know, uh, she had a she had a boyfriend. And well, before you get into all that, tell us about Caitlin. Where was she born? Where was she from? Okay, Set Caitlin, up for us. All right, so Caitlin was born on June the fourth of nineteen ninety five. Um, the middle child to Scotty and Tracy Ledbetter, mm-hmm. and she was born in Indiana, grew up in Indiana, yeah. and uh, she was the middle child, like I said. She had an older sister that was kind of really close to her in age, kind of like you and Reagan. Sure. You know, just very close, maybe a year. Yeah. That was Kaylee, and then she had another brother um, that was younger than her, mm-hmm. um, Aaron. So... You know, Scotty and Tracy stayed married for, you know, a little while. Um, they were together all together, like 20 years. But in 1998, um, Tracy separated from Scotty, and Scotty moved to Tennessee, mm-hmm. to Hillam, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And the kids stayed with their mother, Tracy, in Indiana. Mm-hmm. But looking into this a little bit more, it looks like Caitlin may have came down like in 2011 Mm -hmm. and went to school in Hillam for a little while. Okay. So what kind of girl was she? I mean, was she narcissistic? I mean, she have a bunch of friends and uh, tell me more about her. Caitlin was very quiet and had a very sweet voice. I went back and listened to some of her um, videos of her talking Mm-hmm. And she sounds just like she looks. Mm-hmm. Very soft and sweet. And um, no, very non judgmental. Our family says she was a hippie, a gypsy. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, she, like I said, in 2011, when she came down to live with her dad and went to Tennessee schools, I think she made some friends. And I think mm-hmm. that's when she met her boyfriend, Dustin Loftus. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure they were boyfriend and girlfriend at that time because she did go back to Indiana and mm-hmm. graduate from Ben Davis High School. Mm-hmm. And in 2013, um, Tracy Ledbetter, Caitlin's mom, um, just tragically passes away. Why'd she die? Do you know? You know, I, ne- I have, haven't been able to find the reason of, of that. She was only 38 years old. Um, But do you know if she had suffered over an illness for some time or something, anything? Looked back at some posts from Caitlin, and Mm -hmm. it looked like she battled with some lung issues. Gotcha. um, About a year before she passed away in 2013. Yeah. Now, after Scotty and uh, Tracy divorced um, in 2000, Tracy had another daughter, too, with another man. Mm -hmm. Her name was Katera. And Caitlin and Katera were very close, too. So she was very close to all her siblings. Yeah. So she moves down here in 2013 with her brother Aaron and moves in with her dad. And she goes on with her life, you know. Looks like she got closer to Dustin and Dustin's family. His mother, Terry Loftus, has put a lot of things up um, on social media and on the Farrier Files they they covered this case and she was on there talking about Caitlin mm-hmm. and what a sweetheart she was and how kids just came flock to her. And I looked at pictures of Caitlin and I, I did see a lot of children that were just all over her, you know, like the aunt, the favorite aunt. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. The cool aunt. Uh-huh. And um also in twenty eighteen, she was in a video uh with Yellow Wolf. And MGK, Mm -hmm. so that's kind of a big deal. Um, And I went back and even looked at the video, and and I I saw several girls that looked like Caitlyn, but I wouldn't I wouldn't be sure. I wouldn't be sure. But yes, and she's got pictures that she took with these guys, and you know, looked Mm -hmm. like she was having a really big time. And that was in Hendersonville, Tennessee, Mm -hmm. in uh, 
2018. Mm-hmm. She's working for this um, screen printing company. And I guess whenever COVID hit, she took some, you know, that was it for a minute with work. You know, everybody had to take off. Oh, yeah. Everybody had to either work from home or just not work at all. It seems crazy to look back on it now that everybody, you know, everybody was home. Mm -hmm. And she's living with her dad, and her dad had a living girlfriend, and her name was uh, is Crystal Dean. She was 36 years old. So, I mean, everything seems pretty normal for Caitlin, you know. And I don't know if being at the house would have been tough with everybody. Mm-hmm. During COVID. Mm-hmm. But um, so here it is, May the 2nd of 2021, and what's going on? You know, yeah. Um, she gets into an argument with her dad's girlfriend, Crystal. Allegedly. We don't Allegedly. know that to be true. Yeah. Allegedly. She gets into an argument with her dad's girlfriend, Crystal, and she takes the screen out of her bedroom window and takes off into the woods. 530 mm-hmm. in the morning. Okay, 5.30 in the morning. She doesn't take her phone. She ha- is barefoot, and she's wearing little boy shorts, mm-hmm. you know, white with blue polka dots. Mm-hmm. She's got on a, a crop top, mm-hmm. blue crop top, and no shoes, no phone, no car. Yeah, I know even though it's May, but they're in the foothills of the Smoky Mountains, and it's still pretty cool some mornings like that. So looking back on the temperature that mm-hmm. morning at 5.30 a.m., mm-hmm. wasn't quite daylight yet, right before, um, and it was 58 degrees. Yeah. So, you know, there's it's not freezing cold, but, you know, if you don't have any shoes on, and, and this terrain, I want to talk about what it's like in Hillam, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's woods all mm-hmm. Turkey Town Road is like 5.2 miles long. Mm -hmm. And it seems like everybody that lives in Hillam pretty much lives on that road because it's only like 300 and something people Mm -hmm. to the population. Mm -hmm. So, I mean. Well, and and talk about the terrain, too, she's fighting. Like you said, it's woods. It's woods. I mean, it's gravel. There's snakes. There's copperheads. There's black bear. There's, yeah. I mean, there's there's all kinds of mess up there. Uh Uh-huh. And hills. I mean, so you're not getting out and walking on flat, you know, soft grass with mm-hmm. nothing around, you know. I don't know what kind of animals are up there, but do you? Yeah, I just listed some. Oh, did you? What did yeah. you say? I'm sorry. Like rattlesnakes and, and copperheads and bears and coyotes. And, you know, there's probably some crazy uh, fox squirrels and stuff out there, you know. Right. It, it's, it's, but... Underfoot, it's not a comfortable place to be walking around. No, and think about it. I mean, Caitlin is a pretty level-headed person from what Mm -hmm. everyone says about her. Mm -hmm. You know, like, she was quiet and shy and not going to raise hell. I mean, unless it was necessary, she was standing up for someone she cared about. But other than that, you know, she was a level-headed girl. Yeah, and there's not any indications that she was a Girl Scout or Boy Scout or survivalist or any of that kind of not stuff. Not at all. Yeah, I mean, especially she, jumping out a window in, you know, and, little shorts. And, and not taking her phone. You know, 26 years old, what the hell? I mean, who? Okay, if she would have planned for someone to pick her up, she wouldn't have had her phone with her. Yeah, yeah. And... I got into looking at this a little bit more. I mean, she didn't even have service on her phone at that time. Mm-hmm. So she had to be at the house to mm-hmm. use it. You know, she had to have the mm-hmm. Wi-Fi to use that phone at that time. Mm-hmm. So it's 7.54 a.m., mm-hmm. about two hours, two and a half hours after she jumps out of the window. There was a group message sent out from Caitlin's phone sent out to her aunt and her siblings. Mm-hmm. And it was not worded correctly. You know, it was, what it did was it say? like took off and kind of went into, you know, like I took off, I left. So let me get this straight. She left the house at 530. Mm-hmm. And almost two hours later, this message goes out. But yet we know, well, we assume that through interviews with her dad that her phone 
was still in the house after she left. Right. But yet this message gets sent out. This this message gets sent yeah. from her phone at 754. And around 758, Aaron Ledbetter, who is Caitlin's brother, he had already moved back to Indiana. Mm-hmm. So at this time, he had moved back to Indiana. He receives a phone call from his father, Scotty Ledbetter. And his dad says, you know, uh, Caitlin took off. I can't find her. You know, she's gone off into the woods. And I don't think she's coming back. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, just a few moments before that, her oldest sister, Kaylee, got that message from Caitlin. And she knew it, it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel right. So she's calling her dad. What's going on? And he says, well, she, you know, she'll be back. You know, don't worry about it. She's not the woods. She'll be back. Don't worry about it. You know. Did she say that he told her something along the lines, well, she's, she does this? Yeah, I mean, it was just like a mm. no big deal kind of thing with him. Yeah, it's an afterthought. Right. But Kaylee insisted that she comes down. So her and Aaron drive to Tennessee separately. And she arrives at Scotty's house, her dad's house, mm-hmm. at, on the, ne- the next day, which would have been May the 3rd. So mm-hmm. Caitlin's been missing for 24 hours. And there's been no report, and she's not come back. And there's been no more messages, and her phone's there at the house. Yeah. So, Kaylee's telling her dad, we've got to go file a missing person report. Where he's like, I'm going to sleep. Eh, I'm going to sleep seems first. totally disinterested, like. Disconnected. Yeah. Totally disconnected. Um, very suspicious at this time, and this is just the beginning. So, she... He sleeps all day, and at 9.30 that night, mm-hmm. he and Crystal, his girlfriend, decide that they will go to the police station and file a missing person report, mm-hmm. and Kaylee wanted to go with him, and he wouldn't allow that. So he takes her and drops her off at Burger King and leaves her there for two hours while he goes and files this missing person report. With why his didn't girlfriend. he just leave her at the house? Or why didn't he just, I don't know. That's weird to me, too. And I got a lot of this information from a podcast called TC Spotlight. Mm-hmm. And Kaylee and um, Caitlin's Aunt Tonda are mm. on there talking. So I got a lot of information from that's where this is coming from, some yeah. of this stuff. Yeah. Um, so they do this. You know, he goes in, he comes back from this police station, supposedly. I guess he did. And um, he tells Kaylee and Aaron that. There's nothing the police will do about it because Caitlin is 26 years old. And if she wants to jump out of the window, she can jump out of the window Mm -hmm. and leave anytime she wants to. Mm -hmm. Well, that didn't sit well with Kaylee. And on the the very, very next morning, they go looking. They go searching around the house. Yeah. That would have been Kaylee, Aaron, Crystal, and Scotty Ledbetter. Mm -hmm. And when they get out into the woods and they're looking around, Aaron and Kaylee get very upset. Just thinking about looking around at the, this area and thinking about their sister, this sweet, soft, beautiful girl, you know, is out here wandering around or did somebody get her? Mm-hmm. What is going on? Mm-hmm. And Scott looks at them and starts making fun of them and mocking them and just becomes outraged with anger Mm -hmm. and says, go back to the house. Yeah. So they go back to the house. And when they get there, Scott says, "Uh, I want to borrow Aaron's gun and go out and look for Caitlin. Uh And he's out there and it's raining. At this point, it's raining. It's cold. It's cold. And he's out there for two hours. Yeah. And Kaylee said when he comes back, he comes through the front door and he sits on the arm of the couch and he's just wailing. And he keeps saying, I've lost my girl. She's gone. She's gone. She's never coming back. But how would he, I mean, it, unless it's like a parent's gut feeling, which right, and men typically don't do that quite like a woman or a mom. We'll give him that. But how was he able to know that? I mean... Do you think this was just a farce, like this was a put-on for everybody? I think he had a breakdown. 
Maybe it was a guilty conscience. Uh huh. Maybe he knew more than anyone else. Okay. You remember when she jumps out the window, there was only two witnesses, and one was him, and the other one was Crystal Dean, his girlfriend. Yeah. So, I mean, that was odd for Kaylee. Of course, that's odd. Yeah. Um, she ends up going back to Indiana, Kaylee does, and coming back a couple days later to search again. When she gets back to her dad's house a couple days later, um, I believe that would have been May the 6th. That is when um, the police show up. Mm-hmm. So there are police that came and searched that area on May the 6th. So that would have been four days after she went missing. Yeah. And I think they may have spent a couple, I mean, looking at some posts, I, that it looks like they may have spent like a day and a half there. They brought the dogs out. Um, never did go into the house, though. They never stepped foot into Scott's house which is odd to me too, Mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, I guess at this point they're, you know, they're talking to Scott and he's telling them that, you know, Dustin. Caitlin's boyfriend. Caitlin, Caitlin's boyfriend. Caitlin's boyfriend, yeah. um, He's telling them that, you know, he's the dealer. He serves a lot of people in this county. And this is what one of the police officers tells Caitlin's aunt, mm-hmm. you know, she's confused. Like, you know, what do you mean? Who's telling you this? And and they told her, you know, that Scott was telling them that that Dustin was dealing drugs and yeah. that, you know, he was the main one around. I want to talk about Scott a little bit and Crystal because they were on drugs. Yeah, I was going to say, let's talk about them because. Yeah. I, I, I think a picture is developing about Scott or Scotty. Uh, right. But it is not a good one. Right. Um, no, it's not. And and during those days, there's a lot of confusion between Dustin and his mother, Terry Loftus, and Kaylee, or Caitlin's family. Let's just mm-hmm. say that. Mm-hmm. Um, several reports I saw where Dustin um, put the missing person report out and his mother. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm confused about that. There's so, a- but, but before you get there, like uh, I want people to understand, like Dustin... Um, her boyfriend's mother mm-hmm. got really close with her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, she knew she didn't, her mom had passed away and, and stuff like that. So they had a really good bond. They had a close relationship. And, and what it looks like from what Dustin has posted in the past, mm-hmm. him and Caitlin knew each other for about 10 years. Oh. They were even engaged. So I think they were engaged for about 18 months. Yeah. Um, But Scotty and... So Scotty never really dated anybody after him and Tracy Ledbetter divorced mm-hmm. um, at all. And it was odd for him to do that. But um, he did bring in this Crystal Dean. And I think that probably was one of the first people that his kids even knew that he was date, you know, ever mm-hmm. dated after mm-hmm. the divorce. Mm-hmm. Um, and and she, she was tied to this house that we're going to talk about in another case. Yeah, um, this yeah. Aaron Jane Key. But, you know, she came about, I think it was more of a drug kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But Scotty was, from what his kids say, they all call him a sociopath. Um, he wasn't exactly nice to Caitlin. Mm-hmm. He would cut the water off when she was in the shower just to bully her. And, you know, we said that she jumped out of the window wearing boy shorts and a little tank top. Mm-hmm. Haley says that Caitlin never dressed that way in her dad's house, ever. Yeah. She wouldn't wear bathing suits. If she ever wore shorts, it would be basketball, like long shorts. Long ones, yeah. Because he would make fun of her and, and you know, put her down. Yeah, make fun of her about her weight and right. stuff like that, yeah. Um. So that's, you know... That that's pretty shitty. Mm-hmm. And from from what I understand, he was not a good father, mm-hmm. and he was very abusive to their mother Tracy when she was alive and when they were married. Mm-hmm. So even physically to the kids. So this makes more sense about Scotty when he goes out looking for right. Caitlin and comes back, and you know that tells me he has this breakdown, and it's all theatrical. Like it feels like that was done. 
mm, on purpose, maybe. Or it was an uh-oh moment, like I can't take this back. I, I'm, if he was a sociopath, I don't think so. I think he was doing it just to put on a show. Right. Yeah. Right. Wow. Okay. So that that there's a little picture of their relationship mm-hmm. uh, with his children and with women. Mm-hmm. And um, so I wanted to find out a little bit more about Dustin mm-hmm. and Caitlin's relationship because you know these are the people that were playing a big part in her life when she disappeared. Yeah. Yep. So did Dustin pick her up that morning? Um, that's what some people think that he could be a suspect in this. Um, Kaylee on the TC Spotlight podcast did say that about eight weeks before um, Kaylee went missing, mm-hmm. Dustin and her were having a lot of issues, and that Dustin actually gave Kaylee a concussion. Oh. And she went to her sister's house and was going to stay. Yeah. And during that time, that she was there, you know, that they're young and they're breaking up from this toxic, toxic relationship. And Caitlin's deciding that she wants to stay up there for good. Mm-hmm. But she's talking to him still, talking to Dustin. And when she's talking to him, she's telling, you know, he, he's at her dad's house. Which is odd because one of the fight, the reason why... Caitlin supposedly got into an argument that night. There were several different stories that were given mm-hmm. by Scotty. One and Crystal. One was that she got into an argument with Crystal because she was trying to sacrifice Crystal's dog. Oh, God. And Scotty ended up busting through her bedroom door where she had the dog. And she got scared and jumped out of the window and mm-hmm. ran into the woods. Mm-hmm. Caitlin was not on drugs. And, and mind you, this is a very loving, hippie-ish kind of girl. Little, little, you know, she didn't do any drugs. She did like to smoke pot, and she would have a drink every now and then, but she was not a big drinker. Oh, yeah. And um, she did not have mental health issues. Yeah, she's the perfect candidate for sacrificing small animals. Sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, and we've already talked about how much, I looked through these pictures and how much she had kids and, and animals all around her. Mm-hmm. They just loved her. Mm-hmm. All right, so we know Scotty's full of shit about that one. Well, yeah, him and Crystal mm-hmm. said that one. And then there was the argument that um, Caitlin was trying to bring Dustin over to spend the night too much. And Scotty did not want him there. And she got mad because at 530 in the morning, though, they're going to fight about this shit. Yeah, no. So that, that takes us back to where, you know, Dustin had given her a concussion and she's up at her sister's several weeks before she goes missing. Mm-hmm. And Kaylee says that Caitlin tells her that Dustin is at her dad's house. Mm-hmm. And she's like, why the hell is he, is Dustin over there? You know, at, but you know, he's you, not there. Yeah. You brought up a trend about this earlier or not earlier in the podcast, but you and I discussed this earlier that, Anytime she was around, he did not want her boyfriend there. But yet, when she was gone, her boyfriend, her boyfriend was there. Was always there. Was at Scotty's mm. house. Yeah. Okay. So, from what I hear, from you know what I hear in this podcast from Kaylee, mm-hmm. Caitlin had some proof that there was a different kind of relationship going on between Scotty and. Dustin. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure what what that means, mm-hmm. but Crystal, whenever Kaylee came down to look for Caitlin, Crystal told told Kaylee that she was a lesbian. Crystal was, and that Scotty, she knew he was he was gay as well. Okay, so her dad's girlfriend declares that she's a lesbian, mm-hmm. and then tells her that her dad is gay. Yes. Okay. Just, I'm that, just making sure I understand. You know, she, she could tell these things, and she felt like something was going on between Dustin and Scotty. Mm. Caitlin did, too. And she'd been telling her sister this for about two years. But while she was up there this last time, before she goes missing, she claims that she has proof. 
Oh. It's almost like one of them had something on the other. You mean Caitlin and, and Dustin? No. Dottie and Dustin. Okay, Scotty and Dustin. But yeah. now you just said Caitlin had proof. Caitlin had proof is, is what Kaylee says. Gotcha. Okay. That there was a different kind of relationship there. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if this was a homosexual relationship or if this is a business relationship a business involving relationship. drugs. Could be. Yeah. Could be. I know that Dustin did spend some time in jail. I don't know what for. And I, you know, that doesn't have anything to do with anything, but it could be that there was some drug dealing going on or something mm-hmm. that had put in there before. And with the police officer saying that he knew and everybody in town knew that Dustin was serving up drugs to people, mm-hmm. you know, there's that could be what it was. And I wanted to look deeper into that. So you know how I am. Yeah. I'm going into uh, Scott's Facebook. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at Scotty Ledbetter's Facebook. And just two days ago, Ben, two days ago, he changes his profile picture to the gay to the um, gay flag, you know, like the the rainbow, rainbow flag. The rainbow flag. Yeah. And um, underneath it, he has that he is on the down low with men, and that he charges a hundred dollars per person and five hundred dollars for a group. Oh Lord! And I'm thinking, holy shit! You know, like was Caitlin right? Was Crystal right? Mm-mm. Okay, so I, my my head's turning around. You know, I'm thinking, mm-hmm. who was the soft person in Caitlin's life? You know, there's all this shit going on. She's up in Indiana, and Dustin ends up talking her into coming back to Tennessee. And she goes. He comes and gets her and takes her back to Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And just a couple, like a week or two later is when she disappears. So, so there's a little bit of that. So do you think when when you say soft person in her life, do you think Dustin's mom was like the soft person, or do you do you think it was her sister? I think it was her sisters, and I'm yeah. I, maybe Terry Loftus too because she's really fighting hard. And when we talk about Dustin, I really wanted to look into Dustin because I feel like it's not really fair to say all these things. It's all alleged, everything right. we said right. about Dustin, and. Looking back over the past three years since Caitlin's been missing, he has been a huge force about posting mm-hmm. missing p- posters and old messages. And I learned a lot about their closeness. Right. And I think they were just really young. And I don't know, like I said, I don't know that he wasn't using something at that time. Mm-hmm. And it was just a young, toxic relationship, but it was codependent even. Mm-hmm. I saw some letters from Caitlin to Dustin, and there was a lot of apologizing. You know, please don't leave me. I'm so sorry. And that, you know, that kind of broke my heart for her. Mm -hmm. I think about her, you know, really not having her her sisters and her aunt, you know, or her aunts are five and a half hours away. Mm -hmm. And... Her her mom's gone. And what who did she have that showed her that softness? No. She wasn't on drugs. And you can look at pictures of Caitlin until she was very healthy. Yeah. Well, and that's why I say like she had to have a really close bond with Dustin's mom because um she was in the area. Right. And that was maybe her only outlet. Right. And it it sounds to me like a lot of assumptions got to her. Right. Now, police did, on May the 6th, did bring in bloodhounds. And they did, these dogs go around the area that Caitlin, you know, supposedly walked off into. Mm -hmm. Um, And it led them down to the road, the dogs did. They claim they have a, they saw a footprint in the um, dirt, in the mud. Mm -hmm. And then it went, she must have gotten in the car with someone. Mm -hmm. There are no pictures of this footprint. This is just, you know, so they just left. I mean, they said the investigation was to stay open, you know, but she was of age to leave if she wanted to. And the dogs show that she did leave. Mm -hmm. I personally don't think she ever left. And like I said, they never did go into the house. Tops never did go into the house. Mm -hmm. They never did search, look in the bedroom where she jumped out of this window or took the screen out. They say it was about seven feet up. I mean. 
it, it just seems very unlikely. And according to Caitlin's family, she would have never done these things. Never jumped out of the window at 5.30 in the morning. She wouldn't even be awake at 5.30 in the morning. So, I mean, much less be up fighting about, one, her boyfriend being staying the night there when he'd been there, you know, when she wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So there was definitely some type of relationship going on with Dustin and her dad. Yeah. And then, you know, Crystal. You know, and she's telling these, like, crystal math stories, you know, of sacrificing dogs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so several months go by, and three months. And on August the 23rd of 2021, Scotty Ledbetter's house catches on fire. And, you know, it burns to the ground. Yeah, he gets like out. Paul Ash. Right. He gets out with the beloved dog that was going to be sacrificed by Caitlin. Mm -hmm. But Crystal, his living girlfriend, is not. She weren't so lucky. She was not so lucky. Mm -mm. And she was found locked in the basement and was deceased. Mm. Now, something that Caitlin's sister Kaylee did say is that she has spoken to. Uh, Crystal Dean's mother, mm -hmm. and Crystal's mother has messages um, on her phone from Crystal from the week before Crystal passed away, claiming that Scotty was locking her in the basement and that she was having to use the bathroom, like in buckets down there. And good yeah. lord! So yeah. she was she was a, a prisoner, right? And and it wasn't just a few hours here and there. It sounded like it was days to weeks even. Right. Right. Wow. So, mm. when that happened, here come the police. And, you know, uh, they, they open up an investigation on that. And they bring in the TBI. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, now they bring in the TBI. And now they're like, okay, we didn't even go and search this house for Caitlin. And there was not an official search, and I don't know what that means because they did bring the dogs out on May the 6th, mm -hmm. but there was not an official search for Caitlin until nine months after she went missing. So I don't know if that means that maybe there wasn't, she wasn't put into a missing person, you know, but database. He, he might not have ever actually filed the missing person. And did Dustin, and, and was Dustin maybe talking to him or not talking to him and there was no communication? Like, what was going on with that? Yeah. I, I'd love to know. I'd love to hear from Dustin. And if I'm wrong about any of these things, you know, like I said, I'm picking this up from what I've heard from family members of Caitlin. Yeah. Um, some of the family did go in after they did do this nine-month official search and talk to the detectives on this case. And um, one of them actually had to leave. And, or resign because he lost text messages, those very important text messages off Caitlin's phone right before her disappearance. Mm -hmm. And when the new detective came in, told they told Kaylee and, and her brother that and her aunt that uh, this new detective said, you know, they've lost everything. Yeah. There there is no evidence. But to me, I mean, here it is. It's it's that was three years ago. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't they be able to get that deal off her, off her phone or off her accounts? You know, I would think there was record of it by the phone company. Right. I don't know. So, I mean, this is an odd case. Yeah. You got a 26-year-old that, you know, supposedly jumps out of her window mm -hmm. at 530 in the morning. And the, there's two witnesses that see her. One's not talking, and now one's dead. Yeah, it sounds to me like Crystal became a victim, um, somebody who may have known too much. You think so? That's what it sounds like. So what do you think? Uh, you know, it, again, everything's alleged, um, but as the story unfolds, it, it sounds to me like Scotty got involved in something, and maybe even Dustin got involved and, and got too deep. Um, 
And I'm saying Dustin may have gotten himself in too deep. And it was just haywire. And and too many people knew too much. Too many people learned about things. Because one thing that comes to mind, like Scotty moved away from Indiana to all the way to Tennessee. And it sounds like that was a first step in, in maybe wanting to go live a life that he wanted in Indiana. He just couldn't do it. Yeah. So he had to remove himself and, and go somewhere where he felt like he could live his life. And I mean, it's like... Caitlin wouldn't have judged him if he was gay. So, I mean, that's the thing. If that was what he was hiding, you know, and, and I don't know that somebody didn't hack his page. You yeah, know, like. Yeah, but what if it's not even gay? What if, what if it's just drugs? You right. know, and, and this whole gay, homosexual, unity flag thing is just somebody trying to, again, throw the dogs off the scent. What if? I'm just saying, what if? You know, that area is is very notorious for two things, the drug trade and sex trade. Right. And when we talk about, when we go in and talk about um, Aaron Shanky, mm-hmm. um, that was on Turkey Town Road as well, um, we'll talk about um, some of the things that he, he, I feel like, and a lot of people feel like he was killed for. I mean. Yeah. You know, like a lot of sex trafficking. Yeah, so the story of Crystal Dean is going to take us down a few more roads. Crystal Dean and Caitlin, yeah. And yeah. Caitlin and and Aaron Shane Key actually knew each other. So yeah. there, that's another little twist in this that it, it's just there's a lot to this. And I feel like Caitlin doesn't have a mother. Mm-hmm. And this story needs to be put out because this is three years now. Mm-hmm. And we just watched, you know, we just watched this with with the Karen Swift case. You know, mm-hmm. a decade goes by and you lose or more and you lose a lot of information, a lot of credibility, uh, memory. Mm-hmm. And it can leave you where you can leave where there's no justice at all. Yeah. And. That there's several things that could have happened. Maybe maybe Caitlin did leave out that window. Yeah. And maybe someone did pick her up and take her. And, you know. Yeah. But as far as her family, what they claim, she would never have left. Mm-mm. She would never have missed a birthday. She would never miss out on her, ne- her nephew. Um, she'd never miss out on um, holidays. And yeah. it looks like she spent a lot of time with Dustin's family through holidays and things like that. Mm-hmm. She got to feel that. Yeah. And, and she don't come across as anybody that would just disappear into the woods at night. No. In the state that they claim she was in. Right. She's not the type of person that would abuse animals or even threaten that. No. No. She's not irrational. Um, mm-hmm. I, I feel like that. And like I said, I did go deep in looking into old posts and things, and Dustin has gone hard looking for her. Mm-hmm. Um, really sweet things. Um, lots of times she crosses his mind, and you can tell that. Yeah. Um, Scotty led better? Nothing. Crickets. Nothing. Um, See, her, that's, that's a lot of the reason I think Dustin just may have gotten himself in too deep into something. And thankfully, he survived it. Yeah. But... Still, I think that's that's maybe what happened. It could be. Yeah. I, and I would love to hear from Scotty Ledbetter, but evidently he's not talking to anyone. All right. So, I mean, it, it just, to me, usually the ones that are really, really quiet are the ones you need to watch. Mm-hmm. And that's how I feel. Dustin has been very loud, very vocal, mm-hmm. and very steadfast of looking for Caitlin Mm -hmm. Um, without any cooperation, probably, you know, it doesn't sound like, I know that this uh, district attorney, his name is, what what is his name? Let me ask. Well, while you're looking that up, I'm going to say this. The only other person that knew what happened or was witness to anything or the last person to see Caitlin is dead. Yes. Crystal Dean. Yeah. Again, she knew too much. 
I would think, I mean, it's sad to say that Caitlin is presumed dead. Mm -hmm. Um, But the DA there is Bryant Dunaway. Mm -hmm. And when we do more cases from this area, you will uh, get an idea of what, of, you know, what's going on. Yeah. And And how he conducts himself. Yeah. Right. The sheriff of Overton County is uh, John Garrett, mm-hmm. and I believe he's been there for a while, too. I know Bryant Dunaway, the DA, has been there for since 2014. Yeah. So, Dang, yeah. it'll be 10 years next year, or this year. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the ca- this case with Caitlin, mm-hmm. it just seems like it would get more attention. People don't just disappear. Well, but also, like we said in the beginning, um, over the next few episodes, people will start seeing and hearing the trend in this area. The pattern. Yeah. And and maybe that's what it's going to take to get some more eyes on this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it's an unfortunate thing, but this area is is developed or has developed a trend about stuff like this. Yeah, it has. It just seems like every time I turn around, there's something else in Tennessee and this with Caitlin is not that old, but it is three years old. Uh-huh. And it just, I feel like it needs to be out more. Yep. Well, we're doing it. That's why we're doing this. Yep. And that's why we need to hear from you. Um, so let's talk about um, Scotty and Dustin. I mean, if, hey, you're more than welcome to comment on this. Oh, and sure. We want to hear from you. Sure. And I mean, if someone, Hacked into so I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the Facebook up there. Don't harass him though. I mean, you know, put what he said anyway. Um, no one has a problem with someone being gay, but I just wanted to confirm that what Kaylee was saying from Caitlin seems like it rings true. Yeah, you so, know, and and you know Kaylee too, and and any of the rest of uh, Caitlin's family, please talk to us. Mm-hmm. Yes. Help us out. Help us keep this word going. Help us keep this case in front of people's eyes and ears. Yeah, let us fix anything that's not correct in this. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, get it out there. Yep. And that's why we love what we do. Um, it, it's, you know, we have to have interaction. Mm-hmm. And so as you're watching this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and share these videos. That's Please. the way we keep the word out. Yes. And and we so appreciate everybody, all of our watchers and listeners out there. So yes. thank you very much. Uh, help us keep it going by hitting that like and subscribe. All right. All right. Well, stay tuned because, again, the next few episodes are going to play to this area. And I think you guys will we'll start putting this trend together too as you hear more about this right all right so uh taryn that was great thank you so much thank you all right and we'll see you all again soon bye bye